page, <laughs> we can go through, Abby, I don't know if you would, if you would like to go through and kind of explain all of these little sections and, um, and get some input yeah. from so, everybody. So I think the top of the resume here looks great with the name, you know, being bigger than the rest of the text. So it really stands out. Um, but the, you know, address, phone number, especially the email, you know, that email, we want to use a professional email address. So um, most of, you want to use your name. So, you know, your name is something that um, is professional, that employers are going to be able to see your email and know who you are. Yeah. So the objective, um, although this is, you know, really, um, she's enthusiastic, but... <laughs> Probably not the best objective because we're really looking for something specific here, um, you know, related to the position you're applying for. So, you know, if you want to go into the medical field, you're going to want to say, I'm looking for a position in a medical office where I can learn and grow and, you know, start my medical career. Something very specific and that relates to the job that you're applying for. Have any, does anybody have any questions about that? I know the objective sometimes is a tough one. No. Okay. And then for education, I mean, the education section of this resume looks good here. Um, we've got the high school diploma listed in the year that you received that. And then any of your courses that you receive those certificates for, those are important to put down here because they really show that you've got some additional knowledge. Uh, the caregiver certificate, um, digital literacy, financial math, career development. So if anyone has taken any of those courses, you want to list those underneath your diploma because that shows an extra level of knowledge that you have that you know other applicants might not have. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So then if we move down to the skills and abilities, this is a, you know, a more um, skills based resume for someone that maybe doesn't have a whole lot of work experience. But with the skills and abilities under management, you know, ama amazing at managing my brother, not really, um, you could use that experience managing your brother, but you would just state it a little differently, you know. Um, you know, experience with management, you know, both inside the home and um, while working with others or, you know, managing. And you really want to try to focus on any experience you've had maybe in a club in school or maybe a class that you've taken where you've learned something about management and you've worked in a team. So try to come up with some um, experiences that you've had that you can list there. Um, but you want to kind of stay away from, you know, little brother, kind of um, lean more towards a professional sounding yeah. skill there. Okay. And for communication, um, good at holding conversation about anything. I mean, that's a great trait to have and a great skill to have, but you just want to list it and, you know, say it differently. So communicate well about various topics or um you know, can easily hold conversation, gets well along with others. You know, great at updating Facebook, anything post pictures on, not something you want to let your employer know that you're really good at. Um, you want to keep it very professional. So talking about your communication skills through email, through, you know, um, I have communication skills with my instructor, um, in groups, you know, interpersonal communication skills, uh, list those types of things under those communication area. And then leadership, I like to be in charge, um, you know, is not the most professional way to list that skill either. So for leadership, you'll want to um, talk about any leadership that you've done in a club or if in a team at school, at work, um, and just say it in a more professional way, um, you know, like displayed leadership skills while working in a team that kind of thing. So just kind of um, want to make sure that everything sounds professional and um, you know even if you have to google it or email Melissa and I and how, how do I say this so that it sounds better you know do that um, and you know or, or look it up online um, but try to just have a, a more professional sounding skill um, listed there under 
the skills section. And then down here with the experience, I can't see that part. It looked pretty good though. Um, you know, the experience, um, you want to list your most recent job first and then list um, the different um, you know, positions that you've had. Now, if you have worked at a lot of places, um, you want to make it the most three most recent experience and then, you know, anywhere that you've worked for a, a little while, you know, not. If you've worked there a month, I would just leave it off the resume. You know, um, you want to put down jobs that you've had for a while so that you can show that you've been um, a reliable employee and that they can count on you to stay for a while with their company. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? So, Abby, just to add, since you can't see it on your end, I'm not sure if others can see it, but under the grill cook, it has um, deal with annoying customer request. That's not something that you would probably want to list <laughs> as part okay. of the job requirement. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to make sure I, I noted was at the top right hand corner, there's a little clip art picture of a girl dancing. That's probably not appropriate to um, have on your resume either. So no pictures or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. Yeah, the pictures, I mean, um, if you're in a you know, creative industry, a lot of times you'll have a portfolio that you can show people your work or something, but your resume is not really the spot to put it. So thanks for putting that in there. Yeah, of course. So does, do you guys have any questions about this particular resume, the errors that we've talked about or, you know, what to possibly put in these areas? No. Okay. Okay, so some things to be mindful of when you're completing your resume is that your resume is usually the first thing that your employer is going to see or a recruiter is going to see any hiring managers. So your goal is to make it really easy for them to see that you have qualifications they're looking for and um, see who you are, um, you know, right away so that they, um, you know, that um, it's, it's not real busy and it's easy for them to get a clear picture of your skills and your experience. So you want to list the core skills like we talked about before from that digital literacy, financial math, those different courses that you've taken. You wanna list those skills under your education area because these online applications typically are sorted through software. It's usually um, a computer program that is running these resumes and they're looking for keywords. Um, and those are words that you're gonna be using in your experience and skills. So um, collaboration, you know, um, dependable, reliable, uh, those kind of keywords. And even if it's a position that you're applying for, say, um, a healthcare position, maybe as a caregiver, you want to put that word somewhere in your resume. Um, because a lot of times when those computer systems scan resumes looking for keywords, they're looking for words that are in the job description so that they're matching, you know, they're finding people that have that experience. You want to try to limit the resume to one page, if possible, um, and then be very mindful of your email address. Like we said before, this should be a professional email with your name and the address so that when an employer receives an email from you, they know who it's from. Any questions there? No. So guidelines to writing a resume. You want to make a list of requirements for the job that you're applying for. So you take a look at the, um, the ad for the job, whether it's you know, online, um, and then you want to make a list of what the requirements are. So that way you can refer to that list when you're writing your resume. Like I mentioned before, using some of those words from the job um, description can help with the computer programs picking up your resume. If you have any of those skills, make sure you list them. And even if you don't meet the exact requirements, list some related or similar skills. So, you know, if a job asks for three to five years of experience, but you don't, you only have two, you know, put two plus years of experience. Try to play up um, your strengths and, and your experience and what you've done. Um, you want to use a simple format. So your contact information at the top, 
the city where you live is important so they know um, that you're going to be local and able to get to work. A summary and objective uh, work experience and then your skills and education. Um, use a standard font uh, also because like I said before with the computer programs they run these systems through um, those a lot of times will recognize standard fonts more than something um, you know um, really curvy or you know unusual. Okay, so Melissa, you want to take it from here to have them check their email and we can maybe get a volunteer to help with a resume? Yeah, so um, does anybody have the resume template pulled up and want to share your screen with us so that we can help you put together a resume? And like I was saying earlier, um, you know, anybody else that's on um, on the call, if you want to pull it up and kind of follow along while pl putting in your own information. Um, I'd love to have a volunteer help us with this. Does anybody want to volunteer? Don't everybody just, you know, scream out at <laughs> once here. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I can do the template off my phone. I'm on my phone, not on my laptop. Oh no. Okay. Is anybody on, on their computer that would like to, um, to volunteer so that we can help you put together your resume. If not, and I'll give you guys just another 30 seconds maybe to respond, maybe Abby can pull up the resume and since Malisha, you're being very um, collaborative with us, we can, you know, put together that resume with you telling us, you know, what to fill I can in. Do it. Thank you. Who is that? Imani. Hi, Imani. Hi, do you want to share your screen with us? How do I do that? <laughs> yeah. So are you on a computer? Yes. Okay. So do you see at the bottom of the Zoom? Actually, Abby, will you unshare your screen? Yes. And then Imani, you should be able to see the option to share your screen at the bottom. Um. I think so. Yeah, it looks like you're going to start sharing your screen here in just a second. It looks like it's loading. Perfect. Okay, so we can see your screen now. Um, go ahead and pull up the resume template. My computer is being weird. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So we can see that. We can see your screen and your Microsoft Word document. Abby, do you want to take it from here? Sure. So now um, go ahead, go ahead and type in your name there at the top. And if you just highlight over the whole Okay, and if you want to wait to, you know, put your address and everything in there, that's yeah. fine too, um, you know, since we're all looking at your screen here. Um, if you want to move down to the objective, so Imani, what kind of position are you thinking of looking for? What kind of, what do you want to do when you So I actually have a job interview tomorrow. Wow, that's awesome. Where are you interviewing? Um, Forever 21. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That's, that's great. <laughs> so maybe um, you're kind of looking at customer service, right? Yeah. So, um, so you could use an objective like, you know, um, to work in, in you know, um, a customer service environment. Or, you know, you're looking at, um, you want to work at Forever 21, it's a really, um, you know, fast-paced place, so you could maybe add something like that to um, work in customer service, you know, in a high-energy 
organization where I can, um, you know, help others and work as a team. Or you can keep it really simple, too, and just, you know, kind of put to obtain a position in customer service. And that can be it. You know, I mean, the, you're basically wanting to make it very... But using the customer service word is great because that will, um, you know, align with a job description. You know, if you were looking for a job in customer service, that would usually be in that, you know, in that job description. How do you spell obtain? <laughs> O-B. Yep, that was O-B-T-A-I-N. What is it? A-I-N. Oh, we forgot the T. O-B-T. Is anybody else filling out um, their resume and have a question about what to put in your objective? You can feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. So I know the medical field is a you know a really popular one as well. Anybody here interested in medical? I am. Yeah. Okay. So like for an objective there, um, what kind of, what are you thinking? Like, are you wanting to work in an office environment or more with patients? I'm looking more for patients. Okay. So for that kind of a position, you know, um, you know, to obtain a position where I can work with patients, help patients um, and learn. In the you know um, within the medical field, I want to focus maybe on you know more of a, a customer service with patients as well. That's you know kind of all related to customer service. Almost every job you find is going to have some sort of customer service. Yeah. Good. So, like with the objective, once again, just look at the job description, use some of those words, and make it, you know, direct in what you're looking for. So, education. So, high school diploma. If you have not earned it yet, you can just put, instead of where it says date earned, just put expected 2019. You can leave the rest of that the same there. You want to leave the high school diploma part. Yeah. So you can just change that expected 2019, 2020, whatever year that you're expecting that you will graduate. What if we plan on graduating this year? Can we put 2018? Because I'm graduating yep. next year. Yes, then you would just put 2018 there. Okay. And then the school, um, depending on where you're, you know, what program you're in, um, will determine what, what school you put down there. You know, if you're in the. Um, I'm in Michigan 23. Okay. So there, you could just put Graduation Alliance. And then did you take any of those, those career development courses or um, financial math, caregiver, any of those courses? I took it for caregiver core and I had my okay. certificate. Yeah, I took Great. a caregiver course. Great. Yep. The child development, the career development, the financial math, and the digital. Okay. Yeah, so that's where you can put those under, with where that says related coursework, yep. Yeah. You can put, you know, caregiver course certificate. Yeah, and then just put the year. So if you received that this year, you just put caregiver course 2018. Okay. Caregiver certificate, that's good. Yeah. And then you just put the year. Yeah. And that way, they know that you have that knowledge and it's been recent, you know. Um. Yeah, right. And then if you do financial math or career development is a good one. A lot of what employers are really looking for are those just um, those skills that you learn in career development as well, you know. Um, 
that you're, um, you know, dependable and reliable and have good attitudes and kind of thing. Does what? um digital literacy count? Yeah. So you can put that in there, digital literacy and the year. So every certificate that we have received, we put them all in. So we just do the certificates that you received, um, and then you know if it relates to the job you're applying for. Okay. So if you took a class in child development, and you know you're going in, and that's what you're applying for, I would list it there. Okay. And then definitely certificates. So it's something that you have a certificate for. Okay. Yeah, and one one thing to be mindful of is you got a completion certificate for every class you take. So that's going to be different. You're not going to, you know, list every single class you've taken um, in your high school career with, you know, courses here at Graduation Alliance. So it's going to be very specific. So if you do have questions about that as you're filling this out, you know, whether it's right now or later, I mean, feel free to email us and just be like, hey, I'm applying for this position. Should I put this class? Do you think that that would relate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. When um when I was in school, like in public school, I did business and marketing. So would that count? Yeah, you this um for the customer service position. Yeah. You could put that down. Yeah. So courses in courses in sales and marketing. You just put or just put um you know knowledge of, of or I think courses probably would be better courses in sales and marketing because that would be you know directly really related to the job um, cuz that is can you all both can you can you what uh can you also put english 11 like if you took any english classes can you put that down as a certificate too is this what can you uh put like your english classes that you have completed as far as your certificates, can you put that down also? I mean, if you were applying for a job where it's really important that you have that class, I would, but not um, just a normal resume, I wouldn't list those. I would just list like the, the digital literacy caregiver. Um, it's not, not every class, just the ones that are, you know, you've gotten a certificate from or directly relates to the job. So if you were applying to be, you know, uh, an English tutor, then yeah, then I would put it down. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, if we move down to the skills and abilities, so management, so um, if you've ever, I know with you, you've had your, you know, your classes, you work in teams and things like that, can you think of any kind of management skills that you would have used in, um, in school that you could list here? Anybody have any ideas? Does it have to do with like, or could it be sports? Mm hmm Yeah, you could use, um, you could use sports, yeah, definitely. So you could be assisted in managing um, uh, my team or, you know, assisted with management of the team. That would sound good. You know, if you were, if you helped to coordinate things. And then you can think of also, you know, any skill that relates to management you could put down here too. So, you know, if you're managing a team, you have to be a good leader, um, which is also down there, leadership. But um, when you're managing a team, you have to work well together. You know, there's a lot of those things will overlap. So you really could list those some of those skills under either or. Um, go um, you know, strong organizational skills would be important with management so um, you could list that you know if you're a very organized person um, you could put strong organizational skills I mean a lot of those different things um, you could put there under management any kind of anything that relates to managing people or processes or projects anything like that
And then under sales, um, so now I know applying for this job, have you worked in sales before at all? Have you had no, any experience? No, my first job. Okay. So what about, um, you know, advertising or helping to advertise? If you either had a lemonade stand or you helped tutor a, a student or you babysat or anything like that? Um, or you work I've in done like sales a project? taco drive. Okay. That yeah, so that way, um, so you could put down there. It was like a fundraiser. Okay, so created advertising or, you know, um, created advertising for school fundraiser, you could list. Anybody else think of any examples of sales that you might have heard in the past? So if you, um, anything relating to advertising, I mean, customer service kind of falls under here too, you know, sales. Um, open and honest with customers or works well with customers, um, you know, um, experience helping people to go, you know, any of those things that if, are kind of related to a sales role. What if you was a telemarketer selling things? Is that still part of the credit, you know, assistance with manager of a team? Yeah, telemarketing, I would put that under sales, definitely. Um, you know, you could put, you know, excellent, you know, excellent with customer, excellent working with customers, or you could list, you know, um, experience talking with customers via phone and email. Um, that kind of thing could be listed under there, too. Yeah, and telemarketing would definitely fall into. So think of some of the things that you did. Like, what was one of the things that you did as a telemarketer? Just trying to call people on the phone, you know, and trying to, so, you know, um, being friendly. I was that trying to, uh, I was in the middle of selling things, like face-to-face. Uh, face-to-face? Okay. Face Yes, I was selling things face to face, like I was trying to sell burglar alarms face to face to mm -hmm. people. Okay. Yeah, so that's definitely a sales position. So, in um, you know, for that kind of a job, for if you've been meeting with people face to face, you could put down um, collaborated with others. You know, you could list that as something you're doing if you're meeting with customers. Um, you know, has has a friendly attitude, gets along well with people, um, professional and, you know, friendly, all of those things, you know, that you're doing when you're meeting with a customer, um, the way you're acting, the way you're behaving, what you're saying to them, those are all things that you could list under sales. Okay, um, thank you. Like Sure. So if we move down to communication, um, if you've ever done a presentation, something like that, if you now in your online classes, you've communicated with your instructor. So here you could put, you know, continuous or, you know, um, frequent communication via email with instructors and coworkers, team members, whatever um, the situation might be. Um, you could, you know, you could just say here that, you know, um, communicate well with a variety of personalities or different types of people. You could list that you um, experience communicating on the phone and following a script, you know, if you were doing a telemarketing position or something like that, you were told to say a certain thing on the phone, um, you know, that's important in some positions. Yeah, that's good. We put communication through email with instructors. And then if you, 
Um, maybe if you speak another language or anything, that, that might be something you'd want to listen to communication. How would you say that? You would say, you know, um, communicate in both English and Spanish or whatever language it might be. When you say like you're bilingual, you probably say which. Um, yeah, you could, you could say that as well. Yeah, and you want up to if you um you know, if you speak a other language if it's written and verbal, um, you want to put that down as well. Could I put like able. communicate in various languages and then list them after? Yep, you could do that. So communicate in various languages, and then you could do um, a, just a little list below. So you would do a tab, and then a hit, you know, hit you know, the various languages, and then hit enter, and then tab. For like a telemarketing job, like we were talking about before, there you could say um, experience with telephone communication. Can I say communicate with other um, people? You mean with, with in various languages? Yeah, you want to do a tab and then list the languages if there's more than. I'm talking you know. about if you like did communication with people face to face with the communication of telemarketing i'm trying okay, to so do, you, do you have to say i communicate with other parties in telecommunication you could say communicate experience communicating face to face with customers okay or communicate in a professional manner with customers you could say that Okay. Any other questions there with communication? I know there's a lot you could list under communication. Um, no. Okay. Amani, you know a, a lot of different languages. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Abby, would you recommend list, listing English as well, or would that be a given? Well, I mean, you could list it just in case. Um, probably would be a given since it's written in English, but, you know, maybe not. Some people write and speak different languages differently. Write in English, but they can't speak in English. Oh, that happened. Had a boss like that. He can oh, really? Well, in English, but speaking in English, oh no, it was it was the worst. But it was fun. Oh, no. Amani, did you um stop sharing your screen? Does anybody else see a black screen? I just yes, I do. That's all I see. Yes. Yeah, I don't see the screen like, anymore. I can oh. see myself right now, but I don't see a screen of like a resume or anything. Hi, Kenesha. <laughs> Hi. Um, Sorry for the darker background, but <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, I can't see a black screen. Yeah. <laughs> Amani, I think you might have um, accidentally clicked a button and you stop sharing your screen. So if you want to reshare it, that would be awesome. My computer's being really weird right now. Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> yeah. Is anybody else filling out their resume right now along with us that wants to pick up where we left off and share their screen?
can you see my screen? Yeah, we yes. can, Abby. Okay, good. So we can just go through these last couple here um, on the template and we can use the same, you know, the same position, maybe the, the job at Forever 21. So, but leadership skills, um, if you've never worked before, can anybody think of any ideas of how they could list leadership skills? So maybe if you worked in a, a team or a group on a group project, you could put that down. You could say, I displayed leadership skills while working on a team project at school. I displayed leadership skills um, while you know, on my soccer team. Or, you know, you could use sports here. A lot, a, a lot of that leadership skills in, you know, if you've ever played sports. You could put something down there. Any other questions there? Any other ideas? Even if you've never had a position where you've done any kind of leadership, you could just say, you know, um, comfortable um, in a leadership role, you know, and um, open to learning you know kind of that kind of uh, go that route and, and say that you maybe I don't you know kind of don't know a lot about that but I want to learn about it so open to learning about leadership or you know exploring my leadership skills and strengthening those skills so there's lots of different things you could list there And then down, of course, at the bottom here with the experience. We'll see what's happening. And then we'll go down here to experience. So. Does anybody have a past job that we can, you know, put in here an idea of a position you've had in the past as an example? I was a restaurant cook. Did you say a cook? Yes. Okay. So let's see. And then the name of the company. Doesn't matter, but we'll just, just choose one here. I also was a telemarketer. Okay, so that's another one we could put in here. Um, I also what? was a band leader. A what? A band leader. Okay, so that's something you could put here under leadership. What do we put under experience if it's our first job? So then if you've, if you've ever done any babysitting, you could put that down. Um, have you ever done anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, so you could list that. Um, you could put babysitting and then, you know, for the responsibilities down here, you know, um, if, you, uh, if you did any kind of, uh, you know, read a book to the child or something like that, you could say, you know, um, planned activities for children, you know, you could list displayed responsibility and reliability, you know, while babysitting for uh, you know, children. So those are some things you could list it. Um, if we go back up here to, to a cook, so here for a brief summary responsibilities for that, um, you want to just try to make it sound uh, as professional as you can. So. Um, follow company policies and procedures relating to safety. Um, works well with other members of the team. So what's something else you do as a cook? You prepare meals according to customer requests. Is 
So those are some ideas there under a cook. So under telemarketing, you want to list kind of what your job duties were. So, um, you know, met, this is met face to face with clients and gave excellent customer service. So if, now if it's a past job, if you notice there what I did with the tense, the verb tense, if, you, if it's a past job, I'm going to say I did that in the past. I met with people. I, you know, called. And then if it's a current position, so if this is something I'm, you know, this is where I'm working right now, I want to use a current tense. So I, you know, follows, works well, prepares instead of prepared because that's you know showing that it's something that you did in the past for like my like babysitting thing i mm -hmm. babysit my nephew but i have like set times and days to do it mm -hmm. and i still do it so would i say like to now yeah if you're still doing it occasionally it could, i would leave it up to present yeah and you can just put in here for the dates, you know, you can just put the month and year. It doesn't have to be the exact day that you started there. So, you know, August of 2015 to present is fine. Um, down here, you know. So right there, like instead of spoke, I'm thinking, you know, it communicates sounds more professional. You know, so um, and that's what I'm trying to think, you know, think of a, a different way to say it, maybe that's a, a little more professional sounding. Communicated, past tense. So those are some ideas. Anybody else have a, a position that they have, you know, somewhere they worked in the past or a job that they had where any questions about what you would put underneath? You want to use the bullets because the bullets make it, you know, more pleasant to look at when a, when a customer is viewing your resume. It's easier to read rather than just a bunch of letters all together. You know, that kind of separates it out. Any other questions that you can think about experience? Um, I was no. Another thing under leadership here. So maybe you can look at activities. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? And the biggest thing is to just make sure that you, you know, are um, reading over. Here, I think we have a couple slides here. So some some tips, you know, when doing this resume, make sure you proofread it. You know, um, and computers are good at catching those errors and things, but. Um, you still want to make sure you read it, you know, forward, backward, several times. Have someone else read it. You know, send it to me or Melissa. Have us read it. Um, just make sure that there's no little um, typos or anything like that. You don't want something small like that to, you know, put you out of a of the running for a job. Just, you know, something silly that you could have fixed. So, um, list the certifications or classes that you've taken. And then on the work experience, list the most recent first. And if you work there for just a very short period of time, a month or something, um, you know, I would leave it out um, and just list the positions in the, you know, positions you worked at for a long, a longer time. So here is our contact information. Career.services at graduationalliance.com. You can always email us with any questions. You can email your resume. In fact, we'd love it if you would email your resume over when you're done with it. Um, that way we can help you and proofread and then um, if there's any questions that you might have. We are also both on Facebook. If you connect with us there, 
Um, we post events and things that we're going to be doing, and then our phone numbers are listed as well. Melissa, is there anything else that you can think of here? Um, no, I still, I still see your um, resume template. Did you pull up the PowerPoint slide? I did. Okay. I don't know if anybody else are you are you seeing the. I see a black screen. Okay. Here, let me. There we go. There we go. Here's okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. Here's so here's all of our contact information. Um, kind of put a name with a face as well. And yeah, I mean, just like Abby was saying, I mean, please send over your resumes, the ones that you're trying to put together tonight. We can review it. If you're looking for a job, Abby has a lot of employer partnerships that maybe would be a good fit for you. If you're looking to continue your education, um, if you're, you know, about to graduate with your high school diploma, I'd be happy to visit with you about, um, you know, college opportunities and maybe some partnerships we have or help you search in the area that you live in. Um, so, you know, we are definitely here to be a support and to help you. So I hope that you continue to utilize the services that we have. We have, um, you know, these workshops every other week, different topics. Next week is going to be about Indeed and searching for jobs on there. So please join if that is something you're interested in. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for us? Okay. Well, I really appreciate everybody, um, you know, joining this evening. And I really appreciate everybody taking part and, you know, and volunteering and, and answering and all of those things. We uh, love working with you and answering questions. We've got a chat here. Oh, we've got someone that's graduating next month. Congratulations. We love hearing your stories and any questions you have. So thank you. Yep, keep it coming. Sure. Thanks so much. All yeah, right. And like, and like I said in there, you know, let's schedule a one on one. So anybody that's interested in meeting with Abby or myself, you know, reach out to us. Let's get a one on one scheduled so that we can devote, you know, some time to assist you with whatever it is you're needing help with, whether it's colleges or careers. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.